understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray that let these words be in the souls of those who are to hear it. And let it fill and edify them in Jesus' mighty name. I pray the blood of Jesus from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Silence every voice except for the voice of that the Holy Spirit. Surround me with your heavenly host, Father God, so it's drawn by the flame of the Holy Spirit. To demolish, decapitate, and destroy any demonic presence that might try to infiltrate on this word that I have to speak to your people. In Jesus' mighty name, I give you all the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Check it out. Okay. All right. Oh, pack, pack, pack. Okay, so, before I lay down, before I lay down, all right. For those that are going to watch this, okay, you're the ones that need to hear this. It was good, it was good. And you will say it was good that I was afflicted, all right? So, okay. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This recent season, okay. This recent season that we were in, okay. This season of captivity, okay, of being imprisoned. All right. It was that of Peter. Okay, remember when Peter, right, was imprisoned? Okay, remember when the angel came into the prison, right? And smote Peter on the on the side and woke him up and to you know, that whole that whole part. Well, this is the same thing, right? This is in the book of Acts. At the end of eleven, right? Beginning of twelve, all through twelve. To the second part of 13 okay but i'm about to talk about the end of 11 and the beginning of 12 okay i'll talk about the rest tomorrow let me read this part to you all right acts 11 All right. You've been you've been missing confidence, okay, in this past dispensation. All right? You haven't seen yourself in the right in the correct light. All right? Let me read this. Acts 11 and 7 and I'm going to just go on down, okay? And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed that call not thou common? You are not common. You are not a common person. Why? Because you are a chosen vessel of God. And you are filled and indwelled with the spirit of God. Okay? You are not common. Call that what God has cleansed. Not thou uncommon. You are not. I mean, not thou common. You are not common. All right? You need to start seeing yourself in the light that God sees you in and that he ordained you to be in, that you are in, okay? Acts 11 and 14, who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved? Okay, oh, let me start at 13. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in, the, in his house. Which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words 
whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized of the Holy, baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them like the like gift as he had unto us who believed on him, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? What was I that I could withstand God? Okay. You've been baptized by the Holy Ghost. Okay. And continually baptized by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, same thing. All right. Those that you are called to that hear the words that God speaks through you. The Holy Spirit falls upon them. Okay. And so they resonate with what you are saying, which are the same words that God has spoken to them. You get it? You got it? Continuing, 21. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Four, five, five, six, five, four. Beloved, we are building our own houses unto the Lord. Okay, your ministries, right? Your followers. The numbers that you're getting, these, this is that verse. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. You are turning people to the Lord. Whether they're commenting, whether they're, they're um, um, you know, making themselves known, the numbers are there, right? Even though it's not about the number, right? We're not concerned with the number. Don't even pay attention to the word number, Okay. The people are coming, okay, because they are hearing the word of God. Thus, you are building your house in edification and encouragement in the word of God. And in that, you are converting. You are converting the Gentiles. Do you understand? <laughs> you are converting the Gentiles. Then tidings of these came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch. Who when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all. That with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. <laughs> this is talking about you, okay? And I. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. And much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church. And taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus. And signified by the Spirit that there should be a great, there should be great dearth throughout all the world. Which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. The Bible is repetitive. It's telling the story over and over, right? God called the beginning, I mean, called the ending from the beginning, right? And so that is what's happening now, okay? The dispensation that we are in, this, this, this season we just came out of, right? And walking, transitioning into the season that we are in now, right? Building our houses, okay? When we were underneath, right, the captivity of those narcissists that we that we just came out from, right, 
You, you follow me? Okay. This is the same place that Paul, I mean, Peter was in. When he got, when he was arrested and put in the prison. Remember? Okay. We were arrested and put in prison. In prison. Okay. In whatever environments we were in. This season we were in prison. Right? I know you follow me. Okay? But why was Peter in that prison? Right? Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of them who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. All things work together. What was he doing in the prison? He was in the prison because of purpose. Because of purpose. God will leave the 99 to go after the one, right? Right? It's just like when Jesus was crucified, right? On the tree, he was crucified, right? Went to hell, took the keys, right? Took the keys and freed those captives. Ooh, come through Holy Spirit. Freed those captives that were in hell. At that time, he freed them, preached the gospel to them and freed them that were in hell at that time. In case you guys knew that or not. Okay? One, two, three, my timer. It's repeating itself again. It's repetitive, okay? This is the same thing, right? That Peter was doing in the prison. This is the same thing that we were doing in the prison this past season. I'm continuing. Acts 12. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Okay? The narcissists, right? The people that were just in your life that are not anymore. This is, the, this is where they come in. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Okay? This was a physical sword, right, back then, right? This now, principalities, spiritual wickedness in high places, okay? We battle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, right? The sword, their mouths, their wickedness, their witchcraft. Remember I told you that these people were killing people. They were destroying people before they ran into us, right? And thought that they were going to do the same thing to us. So they put us in this prison. Follow me. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, right? Because they saw that it pleased Satan. He proceeded further to take Peter also. He, they proceeded further to take us also. Are you following me? It's a mirror. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he ap apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four accordions of, of soldiers to keep him. When we got together with them, right? When we when we met them, right? It took them some time, but over time they apprehended us. And they put us in chains. Right? That narcissistic spirit. Those Jezebel spirits that were that are in them. Okay? Intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. They intended. Oh, Jesus, come through Holy Spirit. They intended to bring us forth to the to the people, right? Mocking, scorning, uh, sc scourging, whatever the word. Scourging, okay? We're trying to deliver our soul up to Satan, right? Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. This is the same thing 
the Lord did for us, okay? Sent an angel of the Lord to break the chains that were that were that we were bound up in and broke us out of the prison, okay? And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garments about thee and follow me. That's what we did. We followed the Lord, uh, the angel of the Lord out of the prison, right? That we were in, right? We got rid of them. Whether they discarded us, we did them, don't matter. We got rid of them. They were out of our, our uh, atmosphere, out of our presence, right? And he went out and followed him. And was not that it was true, which was done by the angel. He didn't know what was going on. Right? Things just were happening. Just He didn't know. He's like, what? He's like, is this happening? Is this not happening? What's going on? But thought, but thought he saw a vision. Okay? He thought it was in a vision, but it was really happening in real time. This is the same thing that we went through. It was happening in real time. So much so is that we that we we thought we were it, we so much so that we thought it was a vision, right? Or we thought we were seeing something afar off, but no, it was happening in real time. Just like it is now, it's manifesting in real time. When they were past the first and the second word, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through this through one street and forth with the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary. I don't need to read that part. Okay. Herod from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Okay. The Lord broke us out of those chains, right? Freed us from the expe expectation of the Jews. They expected to deliver us up. But the Lord came in the night, in our darkest hour, and broke us out of those chains. Right at the last moment when we thought there was no hope. You follow me? Hold it, keep it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> 18 now as soon as it was day now as soon as it was day mm. there was no small stir among the soldiers that was become of Peter and when Herod had sought for him and found him not he examined the keepers and commanded that they should not that they should be put to death and he went down from Judea to Sisera and there abode and Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon but they came with one accord to him, and having made blasts the king's chamberlain, their friend des desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, in arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave shout, saying, It is the voice of God and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not glory, he gave not God the glory. And was eaten of the worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of God grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. When we were freed from that captivity, okay, our enemies were smitten. They were smote, right? Smoke. They were smitten, right? They were attacked by the same demons that were holding us in captivity. They failed at what they were supposed to do. Do you following me? Therefore, they were attacked. Right? Why do you think they've been trying to get back in our graces so they can finish the job? Which is not going to happen. Right? But back to my point. Okay, why? Why was Peter in the prison? To free the captives that were also in the prison. God uses everything. The Lord uses everything. Everything, everything. Nothing is wasted. Okay, so why would he send Peter to prison, right? 
just to be prayed for to come out of prison. And not have gone in there to bring out the captives that were imprisoned. Right? The same is with us. We were held captive in the prison that we were in. Right? But for a reason. You know, our sufferings ultimately are not for us. Just like Christ's sufferings weren't for him. Got me? He suffered for us. He suffered for us. And so we are suffering. We go through suffering to free the captives. The suffering that we just went through, okay, that we just came out of, okay, was in order to, to be able to free the captives, to build this house that we are building now in our ministries, to free the captives that we have, that we are drawing, right, that the Holy Spirit is drawing to us. Are you get what I'm saying? The subscribers that you're that, that are coming to your channel, right? The followers that are coming to your channel. These are the captives that we were set to set free and bring out with us. You got it? Are you getting it? I know you're getting it. Okay. This is the reason for these sufferings that we go through, these lessons that we go through. Okay? Ultimately, our sufferings are not for us. And like, singularly, since uh, they're not for us, right? We're suffering so that other people can be free, just like Christ did for us, right? And by his stripes, we are healed. I hope you're getting this. I hope you're getting this. 22, 22 on my timer, okay? So in case whoever is is asking the why, because I hear the why, I hear I, I hear the pondering of your of your spirit, right in your mind and in your heart. Whatever you're going through right now, okay. Know that it's not initially for you. It's for those who are you gonna who you are gonna set free and who you are setting free. Peter wasn't sent into the prison just, just for story's sake. For the angel of the Lord to go in there and free him and him to walk out alone. No, he went to free the captives that were imprisoned in the prison. Otherwise, they would have remained in the prison. Asleep. Held captive. Imprisoned. And probably went to their walk to their death. No, not probably. They would have been. Walk to their death. Herod liked to chop off people's heads. Okay? The Lord wastes nothing. All things work together for good of them who love God. Alright? The Lord wastes nothing. He wishes that no man shall perish. So he's gonna... The gospel needs to be and has to be and will be preached to every corner in every crevice of the earth. Okay? So know that the sufferings that you've went through and that you are going through and that you are overcoming, they are granting you the space right to be able to hold the power that God is depositing in you to be able to bring the other captives that are that are still imprisoned and asleep out of captivity you got me so don't fret beloved do not fret do not fret and do not grow weary in will in well doing. Okay. You are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses, meaning you are always being watched. Okay, heaven is watching you at all times. Heaven is cheering for you at all times. Heaven is praying for you at all times, without ceasing. 
You got it? You are heavily, heavily, heavily protected. Okay? You are protected in your sufferings. You are protected in your trials. Okay? Even when it seems bleak. Even when it seems so bleak and so dark where you cannot see a way out. Okay? Even when you do not see a light at the end of the tunnel. Do you see how Peter, how content Peter was? Peter was in their sleep. Chilling. Chilling. And while he was doing that, the church was praying for him. And as they were praying for him, the same time they were praying for him, the angel of the Lord appeared. Say, hey, Peter. Get up. Mr. Comfortable, get up. Time to go do what you came, came here to do. Peter had faith. He knew. Not saying you don't. But Peter was content. Mmm. Mmm. Come through Holy Spirit. Peter was content. Okay? Be content. Wherever the Lord has you, be content where you are. Have faith. Relax. All right? Relax. Trust in the Lord. And be still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Okay? Tell your spirit, peace, be still. All right? Man, I got some for y'all tomorrow in the morning, okay? I was reading uh, um, this, the next, what, four pages? It's too much to try to cram in tonight. I need time to stretch it out, okay? So I'm going to do that in the morning, all right? Um, I love you guys, all right? Uh, make sure you guys do your protection, you know, put your protection on before you go to sleep. Put your body armor on, all right? Um, and get some rest. All right, get your energy, get you, get you, get some rest, get your energy levels back up, okay? All right, all right, I love you guys, man, and God loves you even more, okay? All right. Remember, don't fret. Be content where you at, where you at. Be content on where you are, right? Don't worry about nothing. God has you covered. All right. Have faith in what He is doing. Even though, even though you might not know what he is, the whole the whole bit of what he's doing, have faith, all right, in what he is doing, okay, and trust him, all right, and be content where you are, okay? Wait on the Lord, I'm telling you. Wait on the Lord. Again, I say, wait on the Lord. <laughs> all right, all right, I love y'all. All right, good night. Peace. Ciao, Bella.